Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Project Destiny. So we took a break. Uh, it was a lengthy break, but it was needed. So the game is in beta officially, and it has been for several weeks since uh, taking the break on the last episode. But there's a lot of new stuff that I had to deal with as far as uh, how the mods are going to work now. And I had to get rid of a couple mods, eh? and some things are kind of different now. So this is, let's, let's just back it up, right? So what came with the new beta update? A lot. A lot, a lot. Uh, the primary thing being, this isn't what you'll look like when you first start your... Um, your space center. So this is the space center for default, um, you know, where we were left off, basically. So if you were playing the game before and you have your save file, this is what your space center is going to look like. But I wanted to show you, uh, you know what, we will save just in case because I have been doing some things. So I want to make sure those aren't lost. Let's go back to the main menu. I'm just going to start a new game real quick and show you what happens. So they made it so yeah, every, oh, there's a new skybox. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, let's just start career mode. Yeah, this should technically uh, function as, as anticipated, but your space center will be like level one. There it is. So you've got like, you know, nothing upgraded. All of this stuff has limits. So the max vessel limit uh, currently is, you know, or max vessel size is not very big. And then the the weight is 18 tons and you can upgrade it to 140 tons for your um for your launch pad and then your your poor runway is like the bumpiest piece of tarmac i've ever seen in my life it's not even tarmac it's dirt it's terrible and then there's other things like you know your your science stuff isn't upgraded this isn't upgraded your, your kerbals can't even go on eva in space or eva in general you know all of this stuff is as you would expect but yeah it's it's difficult so i wanted to just say that if you're getting into kerbal soon your space center won't look like the fully upgraded one and that's okay because i think that this whole thing that they've done makes the game incredible and i bounced a few ideas back and forth of whether or not i should continue with uh, what i'm doing now or change the series up a bit where we can roll back to that kind of stuff and i've i've decided to continue as of now just you know continue going forward in space and maybe in the future we'll we'll do something new with some of the new stuff but i didn't want to go too crazy knowing that uh they're getting closer and closer to the launch the official launch of the game out of early access and that'll surely change some things as well so maybe i'll wait until then so let's check out some of the new stuff just real quick uh we have a new skybox this is from one of, actually, it's pretty much the pack that I was using before for all my clouds and, and stuff. And it, it's what made my son look really weird. But my son is now back to having its normal uh, sun glare, which I'm, I, you know, kind of mm, a little, eh, I kind of wish that I had the, the other sun. But the, the, you know, skybox is really nice. You get like the nice blues and stuff in the background. So that's going to be different. The clouding is going to be kind of different. And I have high risk textures on the planets. Aside from that, uh, most of the mods are the same. I say most because this uh, Atlas Space Telescope doesn't work anymore. Our dry docks that we set up, those don't work anymore. So I took out TAC life support because I was just having way too many issues with the game wanting to run properly with it. Um, so, and it got to the point where we didn't really use life support anymore because it just had so much on it and we could carry so much with us that it just didn't matter. So I felt like, ah, that's kind of a useless mod at this point. So I got rid of that, but in its place, I have put a new B9 mod, which as of this point is still in like super, super beta alpha thingy, you know, and I'm going to, that's going to be like the basis for the next few episodes of what we're going to do here. So I'm going to... Uh, you know what, let's show you the mod real quick, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. So let's just make a quick... Uh, oh, this, all of this is set up differently now on the left-hand side, so how this is all laid out for building. I like it a lot better. Uh, let's just put a couple of these on so I have space. But, but check this out. So under aerodynamics... I have procedural wings and procedural control surfaces. And what does that mean? Well, it means that I can put this down, 
And then uh, I could do it with their little pop-up tool, but I actually I think it's a little clunky. So, you know, what I can do is I can um, change the length of these, right? I could change the width on the inside, uh, or I could change the width on the outside. So put that super small. So we could do that kind of thing, and then we can offset it. So it's got like a very futuristic look, or you know, your standard, this is actually an aircraft and I want it to fly look. Let's bring this size in. Yeah, see, it's kind of cool. And you can change how the leading edge and the trail edge look. So for example, uh, the leading edge, you could change the shape, which is that little front part there, which is pretty cool. Um, you could do the same thing with the trailing edge, but you can also change the uh, the materials, right? So what it looks like it's made out of. So on side B, you can make it so it's not heat shielded looking or you know have normal wings or have it heat shielded. And on the top, you can, you can do the same thing. You can change that all around and then you can do the same thing with the trailing edges, but there's just some really cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, also, you can do these uh, control surfaces, which basically are the, the same idea. So you can increase the length of the control surface. You can, you know, make it kind of wonky and stuff. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do, which means that uh, there's two major things with it. One, you're going to have less parts because you can make the wingspans that you want with fewer parts, which means the ships will run better and they'll be less wobbly. And then the second part to it is simply that uh, it's, you know, it, it kind of gives you more flexibility on how you want to do things. And that's, you know, having to do with the fact that you have less parts and you can uh, get a lot more creative with what's there. So we're just going to completely scrap that plane. And what I'm going to do, so we need to go back, and this is going to be the basis for the first few episodes coming back here into Project Destiny, is I want to go back to these things that we had before and I want to fix them. I want to do them better. So this was our shuttle, our Spartacus shuttle, Mark 2 B, that I'm going to redo with with procedural wings because these wings while they were cool it made it super unsteady coming back into the, the the atmosphere and just a few other things were having issues with this sucker so ideally and it, it still has the massive cargo bay so we could we could still do some really cool stuff with it which i plan to do uh we we want to get it working and then we want to launch a satellite so i'm actually i'm gonna take that out of there so i remember to do so um yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna try to launch a satellite, and we're going to change out the different wings, and we're just gonna make it a lot better. And uh, we got to do this with several spacecraft, so that's we're just gonna start on it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the procedural wings on, and then I'll show you kind of my new design for the Spartacus shuttle. All right, so I've got it done. Took me a while actually. Got the wings, so it's basically three wings. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to get it to angle the way I wanted it to, so I had to use three in order to get that specific angle. I got my control surfaces, got my air brakes, uh, landing gear, all of that, and I got a payload that we won't see until we get up into space. Because this, after all, is a is a you know a spacecraft. We're trying to get it into space so it can complete a mission. Now, with that being said, we need to highlight one of the features that came with this patch as well, which is the fact that everything... Ooh, I'm going to have to piece that together. See, I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. So, because this piece is attached to a different piece, um, I think it's attached technically to the landing gear. Um, oh, no, I made it a control surface. Well, that would make a lot more sense. Okay, well, I'm going to fix that. But basically... I like how that... I mean, it's a, it's a cool wing design, but it's not quite what I had in mind. i got to make that an actual winglet. So uh, your your Kerbals, which we can, uh, we can actually use now because they all gain experience. Well, they, they gain experience. So, like, you'll see I have RCS here, or SAS, rather, and I can, you know, switch prograde and retrograde and all that. By default, your Kerbals won't have that. They need to gain experience, which is kind of cool. So let's go back to the space plane hangar. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch this around real quick. But yeah, that that's kind of the thing is your Kerbals will gain XP, which means you don't want to lose them, which means I'm, I need to come up with a better solution on how to get my Kerbals out of aircraft, which I'll do uh, after we're done test flighting this. I know it's a terrible idea. I probably should do that uh, first. 
All right, there it is. Nice and majestic. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, as I explain this on our way up, I'm going to just quickly test things uh, to make sure certain uh, things are working. Clearly not. Okay, so I'm using advanced fly-by-wire, right? So presets uh, should be using mine. Yep, okay, cool. So I've got this set up down here, but I have it set up wrong. So that needs to be that one, and this one needs to be that one. That should work. Huh? Yeah. Cool. So I'm using an Xbox controller, basically. So what we're going to do is, uh, that's not what I wanted. I want to change this to chase camera. I'm going to set my camera just right. Bring it back a bit. Um, let's turn on SAS. Let's throttle up. Whoops. Uh, I want the other one. <laughs> and uh, now we can unbreak. And it should fly just fine. This is all a test. So I'll test to make sure that everything's just flying. And if it works functionally, well, then I guess we can, you know, effectively uh, go and go straight up into space and not have to worry about coming back. But I do just want to make sure everything's working. I don't have it on chase camera anymore, I know. But I want to, uh, okay, I'm going to put that under the controller. I'm going to try to lift off like this. Okay, I had a feeling that was going to happen. Revert flight to launch. Welcome back to Kerbal. This is... <laughs> This is exactly how I imagined it. Now, I wanted to try something with that because that is really, really annoying that it does that. Um, so let's go to the space plane hangar. I'm just going to add. I'm going to add something that I had before, but this time it's actually going to make a little bit of sense on the way that it works. So uh, utility. I had uh, this, this one, this gear bay back here. Like so. so. I'm going to add two of those. Which should keep it from... Um, should keep it from bouncing on the ground. But I'm going to flip it around backwards. So it should still also allow it to, to get off the ground. Which I think was the issue last time. Is it just wasn't... It was... It was yeah. It just wasn't going to let it off the ground. I just don't want it blowing up. That's a bad idea. I could just put different... You know rocket on the back basically if i really wanted to all right let's try this again so that throttle up this and effectively it should it should just launch just fine and once again going to put down the controller because i want to watch this from an angle to see if it'll even work i don't think it will because of the gear in the back which is might be a bit unfortunate let's get up to speed a bit more uh, come on. Okay, do it again. Uh, uh, no, okay, so revert flight back to space plane here. We gotta get rid of them. We just gotta be careful on launch. That's all it is. That's fine. We can do that. Eek. Uh, yeah. Save. In fact, I once saw a little trick that I know you can do, which is to take this. And uh, do that. And maybe uh, once I place it, I can. What's the, the offset controls? Ah, screw it. I'm not even going to bother with it. Launch. That should keep it from blowing up. Uh, what it basically does is that that piece has a lot more durability than the engine itself, unless they fixed it in the beta patch. I haven't tried this for quite a long time, but I know it used to work. So it should uh, effectively work. All right, let's try this again. This time this is going into space. I don't think I need to turn around and try to land this thing because we've already tried to land this thing before. We know it f functions reasonably well, right? So let's get up to about 90 meters a second. And look right there. We can start our gentle lift off. Uh, uh, come on. Okay, well, that's gone. Okay, we're going to the end of the runway. There we go. Perfect. Now let's pull up a bit. See, that wasn't bad-ish. I mean, it was kind of bad. Okay, back to the controller. Let's uh, put the gear up. See, I have this all bound on the controller. In fact, I want to just really align my camera perfectly here. Uh, not free camera, chase camera. There we go. All right, let's start our ascent and get this sucker into orbit. 
It's about as wobbly as I remember it being. But if if you think about it, uh, I do have slightly more control using the Xbox controller than I do with the keyboard. So that was kind of my issue before is launching this thing into space. I really had to work in the controls, especially coming back in, just to make sure that I wasn't going to blow up. Now, we don't want that. We definitely want to kind of have a bit smoother of an experience, and the procedural wings are definitely going to help with that. Um, but once we get to a certain height, it should it should level out. Uh, I've, I've experimented with these wings before and how this all works, and I, I have a pretty good idea of the capabilities of it, basically. Now, the thing I need to watch out for is getting too fast uh, in too low of atmosphere. That's not going to help. And then the other thing to watch out for is the fact that uh, I need to be going a certain speed by the time I hit a certain height. Uh, mostly because the atmosphere starts to thin out and then I start to lose it. And I don't want that to happen, so I just got to keep an eye on, on flying this sucker. In fact, when we come back in uh, for landing, I might do it all through the cockpit view because I got that to work fairly well as, as, as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm just watching that nav ball and I'm just holding the stick back. Got it like right in the perfect position where it's holding me steady um, and I just got to make sure it's not doing its roll thing left and right which uh, could potentially pull us off course quite a significant amount so I just kind of got to keep an eye on that. So at this point I'm at 17,000 meters going on 18. And I've got a lot of speed, but I don't have a lot of height. And I'm having a hard time pulling up. Um, more control surfaces would definitely help with this, but I think, for the most part, I just I need a better angle of attack, and it's not quite giving it to me. So, yeah, I, just, I might be going too fast for this layer of atmosphere. 